Good morning, everyone. This morning's reading will be Satisfying Mind Hunger by Janine Roth. It never occurred to me that eating had anything to do with hunger or fullness. That's because I didn't let my body get hungry. I ate from mind hunger. Most of us confuse mind hunger, which has nothing to do with food, with body hunger which does. We aren't even sure we know how to feel true hunger. We no longer trust the innate wisdom of our biology. But being physically hungry is like being in love. If you don't know, you're probably not. <laughs> Mind hunger, on the other hand, is endless, bottomless, erratic. You pass a bakery and suddenly you have the desire for an eclair. Even though you ate breakfast 10 minutes ago, <laughs> you're sitting in the restaurant and you see that plate of mashed potatoes go by and suddenly you want some now, even though you're in the middle of a very good meal. The way that I learned to listen to true phys physical hunger was by rating myself on a scale of one to 10. One is so hungry that you're ready to eat whatever doesn't eat you first. Ten is so stuffed that when you roll over, your stomach stays on the other side of the bed. <laughs> five is comfortable. If you start eating at five or above on the hunger scale, you're eating from mind, not body, hunger. But if you start at two or three, you're eating from true physical hunger. Years ago, a woman confessed to me that food was her main source of pleasure. It was the only time in the whole day that she gave herself permission to have sweetness, the taste of good things, and time to herself. The hunger scale had no meaning to her. She ate when she needed to stop running around, not when she was hungry. Without treats to look forward to when she felt overwhelmed, she believed she was dooming herself to a life of drudgery. I suggested that we come up with a variety of non-food pleasures, ways to treat herself that didn't involve food. Quiet time, being in nature, making contact with a friend. When food stopped being her only source of pleasure, she was able to actually follow the hunger scale. Now to reach your natural weight, you not only need to eat when you're physically hungry, but also stop when your body's had enough. Yet most of us have no idea what enough means. We keep taking more than enough of what we can get because we believe it's impossible to get enough of what we really want. Such things as love, joy, happiness, value, contentment, understanding, friendship. When you start eating to satisfy your physical hunger and not your mind hunger, having enough is simply a matter of listening to your body's signals. Being full and having enough are not necessarily the same thing. So you can never get enough of what you don't really want. If, you cra if what you crave is time alone or a conversation with a friend, no food in the world is going to satisfy you. To be satisfied, both your body and mind have to be engaged. When we stop using food to feed the hungers of our hearts, we not only discover the pleasure of eating exactly what our body wants, but we are also free to attend the part to, the, to the parts of our lives that we never noticed. We become aware of quiet needs, unspoken desires, and the thrilling and crazy and unexpected joys of being alive. Now, that's what I call a feast.